Hi, it's Tammy Why Not here. And I've been working on a little project called Tammy What Not to Give Up for Lent. And um, I'm sitting here with Leah Thorne. <laughs> and uh, we just worked on a little project, which uh, you will hear about a little bit later. Um, but uh, I asked Leah what she didn't want to give up. And she said passion. So I wanted to talk to her about that. So what do you mean by that, Leah? What's your passion? My passion is... I have many passions. Ah, but I had a feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have many passions. I think the one I was thinking of, because we've been working with older women, my passion is for us as older women to really come into our own at this stage of our life. So I'm just doing everything I can at the moment to make that possible, bringing older women together and also just showing the world who we really are as older women. Well, you've been doing that in lots of different ways. I have. I've been hearing about your projects. Mm. Can you tell us about one or two of your projects? Yes, well, so here in Folkestone we had a pilot project of Older Women Rock, which is the name uh, that I gave to the whole project. And um, there were different parts of that. We had a, a Zumba Gold flash mob in the town centre. What did that look like? It looked, it looked wild and it looked a little bit sad because it was a snowy day, so there weren't <laughs> many people in the, in the shopping precinct. But the idea was that we were going to be right in the heart of Folkestone, you know, in the middle of all the, the big stores. And we were just going to have this huge intervention where we did our Zumba Gold number, which kind of went like that. <laughs> um, and there was about 22 of us, all over wow. sort of 58, 59, sort of into our early 70s. Um, yeah, we got into the local papers, and the idea was to promote Older Women Rock and what was coming. And what was coming was, for three weeks, I ran a an older women rock pop-up shop, and which was full of clothes that had my poetry on it. And each of the poems was about an issue that affects us as older women. Mm. So things like being a carer, um, which affects a lot of older women, either for a partner or a parent, grandchildren. Um, it, things like um, the beauty industry and how it impacts how we feel about ourselves and everyone sort of telling you you shouldn't have grey hair, you, know, you shouldn't have lines, so there was a poem about that. A poem about how we disappear in the media when we hit 45 or 50. Oh, that's the truth. Um, older women in poverty, you know, we li still live longer than men and we live longer in poverty because for many women we don't have... A, a, a full pension because we had breaks or we had low paid um, part time home. work. Some people yeah, stay home. That's true. Um, and I'm very committed to working with women in prison and I wanted older women in prison to have a voice. So there was a, a poem, well, actually, it wasn't a poem, it was just taking women's words. I went and worked in a prison with older women and I just took their words and then that went on to a, a piece of clothing. Um, so I'm going to just things. stop you. So you wrote these poems, yes. and then you found these pieces of clothes, and you put the words on the clothes. Mm. Tell me about that a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> well, I'm really, really good at finding bargains in charity shops. Mm. I love, I mean, I come from the rag trade. That's what my parents did. So I can go into a charity shop, and I can find a really fantastic piece of clothing. And so I've got... I've been collecting these clothes, really beautiful clothes, maybe from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And then I started to meet the most amazing older women visual artists. I mean, some of them I already knew and some of them are in the project that we've just mm -hmm. done together. Um, I started to talk to them. They were sculptors, they were fashion stylists, um, they were painters. And then I met the Profanity Embroidery Group, which Profanity is based in Profanity Embroidery Group, which is based in Whitstable, and they're a group of women who embroider profanity. And <laughs> so, all in all, there was eleven old women artists that I worked with. I gave them a piece of clothing and a poem, or words from women in prison, or mm. words from women carers, and they interpreted the poem onto the clothes. It's a shame I should have brought some to show you. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're very beautiful and very different. Some are embroidered, some are burnt, some are spray painted. Um, it's, it's, it's a really fantastic collection of clothes. So that for three weeks I had the shop. People came in, I read poetry to them, they, we talked. And a lot of the older women who came in, it was just really emotional. You know, we'd, we'd talk about what the pieces of clothing meant. So, 
there was some real humour in there. So there was a poem that said something like, um, I passed gas as profusely as an oil field in Texas. <laughs> um, or there was something about how we feel about our bodies. I'll never have a design of vagina that vajazzle dazzles and permanently dilates. So there were some things that were taking quite painful emotions, but treating them in a mm. light way. And we had great conversations, you know, women talking about very personal things. And some younger women who came into the shop really found things resonated with them because you live with sexism all your life yeah. as a woman. And so there were some things that, you know, younger women felt were really true for them. And alongside that was a programme of talks and workshops and performances. So, for example, we had one evening which was Women Over 50s Film Festival, which would be great if our film could go into oh, the, yeah. a Women Over 50s Film Festival. Um, and so was it a, a film festival uh, by w films by Women Over 50? It's a, it's a two-year-old film festival, yeah. and the films have to have older women central to it, mm -hmm. and or be made by women over 50. Excellent. Yeah, it was a fabulous evening. There were short films and documentaries, and it was, it was lovely. And then we had an evening on Greenham Common. I showed a film, Carrie Greenham Home. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an evening on Spare Rib. So I wanted us to remember what our generation has done, really, um, and to remember who we are, well, just to acknowledge who we are now. Really. So that was all a part of your festival called... Yeah. Uh, Older Women um, Rock. And I kind of did that with my hand because <laughs> you handed me a piece of candy that had um, Older Women Rock right written in it. And I yeah. thought that was fantastic. Tell me about that. Well, I just suddenly thought I'd like to get some sticks of rock made with Older Women Rock on <laughs> That's it. That's a fantastic I just idea. It was so exciting. And um, I think a lot of the, the rock the rock makers are up north. Mm -hmm. And so I found a really lovely company and they asked me what colour I wanted, so I had this colour pink go nice. through the middle and had a, my, my nail polish kind of colour <laughs> for the outside of the rock. And it, women have loved it. And also, we had some in the window, and um, a few people came in and just said, either, oh, my wife's just had a birthday, or I've got a friend who's just had a birthday, and she'll love this. You know, mm. this kind of, and I think just older women rock, I wanted something that was really going to subvert ideas that society has about us. And I really think we do rock. I think we've got so much life in us and society expects you to really start slowing down, to really be boring, to really be invisible. And this was a way of saying that we refuse. Excellent. Just refuse. I think that's fantastic. I'm going to ask you one more question and we'll probably bring this to a close. But what's up next for you? Well, so <laughs> it has really been, I think it's probably been the most successful work mm. I've ever done. So we're starting to get requests. We did a catwalk, 19 models, modelling the clothes, and we've got two requests to do a catwalk in Canterbury and one in Brighton. And I've got three months fellowship at Keele University to develop this. I'm actually going to work on with older women about the emotions attached to all of these issues because mm. I, I firmly believe that no matter what your age, actually, your life goes better if you have a, a, a space to express feelings and to really be able to address what's going on rather than keep it all in. So for three months, May, June and July, I'll be living on campus in Kiel. Fantastic. Yes, I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm going to be presenting at a couple of conferences. So, so you're good. rocking, aren't you? Yeah. Well, pay attention to all my <laughs> listeners out there. Pay attention to Leah Thorne and Older Women Rock. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what else. We just finished working on a little film called... Um, love Your Lines, and it's part of something that I call public service announcements, where I'm trying to just get stuff out and to tell people what it is to be old and how to live and how to feel better and how to have the good time. So we worked on a film today that was going to be fun. It's based on one of Leah's poems. It's called Love Your Lines. That's what I called it. It's not the title of the poem. <laughs> I just said, Love Your Lines. And so y'all look out for it. We're going to launch a whole bunch of public service announcements in April. So y'all look out for it. And uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.